who indeed possess great power. But I am immortal. Every time I fall, I will be reborn again. Do you see the futility of it? Killing me is wasted energy. A hopeless exercise. I am infinite. <laughs> Tow it. The genie will return if you don't get rid of Cedar's hate energy. Look around you carefully. Listen up, Toen. Atla Melia has the power to seal almost anything in Atla, but its power extends beyond that. I'm gonna seal the hatred? Now is the time to use that hidden power. The power to bring a lost soul back. The Atla Melia will be consumed, but with its final power, it can do one thing. It can bring a soul into Atla Melia. It's not too late. Call out for Sophia's wandering soul. Oh. I mean, that's better, I think. It stops it from existing in the first place. Sophia, I'm... I'm alive? Y yes Toen, so it's over now. That evil will never come back to life. At least, not for some time. Let's go home. Now you can smile, you big old dope. Can you get up? Yes, I'm fine. Seda, where did the boy go? I'm sorry, Sophia. I was wrong. What an empty victory, selling my soul to darkness. What has become of this world now? War torn, desolate and barren, like a drought-stricken field. It was me, all my doing. Seda. Lying unconscious, I heard the boy call my heart. He told me of the journey he had taken. It was a fantastic adventure to create a new world. Sita, we still have time. Perhaps you as king can create a new world. The boy must have come to tell you just that. From far away. Let's make it together. A kingdom free, full of smiling faces. A new history leading to a bright future. Well, now that I've finished Dark Cloud, I guess it's time to share my thoughts. Story-wise, it's fairly simple. That's okay. You don't need a complicated story. Sometimes it's just enough to have a straightforward premise and execution. 
Overall, your allies get their moment to shine every now and then, and then they're a part of your team. There really isn't much more to it than that, so I guess the lack of expansion on their initial story arc is a small weakness? I think Goro's backstory was the most effective of the five allies. The only other character the game tries to give you a connection with is Ungaga, and it felt weaker by comparison. I think Muskalaka as a whole felt like the weakest location in terms of story. Though I will say the hints about Toen's father and his connection with the people there was very interesting considering there's very little focus on Toen himself. But that's one of the things I really liked about Dark Cloud. A lot of the storytelling is unlocked as you go. By rebuilding the villages you get more of the lore and learn about the place you're rebuilding. It adds a nice touch especially in places like Queens, where you aren't given a straightforward explanation of the story, just bits and pieces until the very end when the most unassuming of characters spells it out for you. Speaking of, I really enjoyed the concept of rebuilding the villages you save. If this concept was modernized with really pretty graphics, I bet people would have a ton of fun with just this section. Going back to stories that piece themselves together over time, I think I hinted at it earlier, but I don't know if it helped or hurt to not see Seta until practically the end. You saw him at the beginning, and he showed up in Drain's lair, but you don't really know what he's up to until practically the end. It does provide breathing room in the other locations for their own personal stories to develop, but it almost feels like in your search to find a way to stop the genie, you sort of stumble onto why it even exists in the first place. But I can't say that I dislike that, you know? I do think one of the weaknesses in the storytelling is the weird translation issues. Some of the wording is really awkward, it felt like the translation team did a one-to-one -one translation and said they were done for the day. There were words missing, words in the wrong order, and some of it didn't read like a human wrote it. That and some of the tutorial directions blatantly tell you the wrong buttons to press. So I'm not sure what was going on there. Other than that, there's nothing really objectionable about the way the game presents itself. I love the concept. The survival mechanics make sense, and keeping your weapon sharp and preventing it from breaking are mechanics I totally support. They change how you prioritize gameplay, and I really like that. What I didn't like was how everything is RNG. Gold rarely drops, weapons are hard to come by, and then suddenly you have five copies of the same one for the same character. Randomized chests I can live with. But without being able to sell fishing lure, I would have been really crippled in the income department. Which reminds me, fishing in this game sucks. I'm sorry if you have fond memories of this game, but fishing is the absolute worst. I despise it. And speaking of things I despise, I absolutely hate the camera in the dungeons and during boss fights. It is so bad. And you already know how the bad camera and your movement being dramatically slowed down while locking on are sore subjects for me if you've seen all my previous videos. The bosses have these cool mechanics, but the wonky gameplay in those respects just make the whole experience of fighting them very unfun. And it also makes certain characters harder to play than others. That being said, the RNG really hurts Ungaga and Osmond. I know you can buy a weapon for Osmond, but it still needs to be raised about two tiers before it does anything significant. Which brings me to building up weapons. For casual play, I can see the fun in just mindlessly building up your weapons, attaching the sense sphere and all that. And for the people who love fishing, you might have an easier time building up your weapons earlier in the game than I did. But honestly, if it weren't for finding higher tiered weapons and buying the Owl Sword, I think I'd have been sunk. I wish building up weapons was easier. It feels like it takes forever. Plus, it doesn't exactly tell you just how far you need to go to push your weapons, you know? But that being said, I don't think there's anything wrong with the way weapons are built up. Synth spheres make things a whole lot easier, so I think if gems were easier to obtain earlier in the game, and it was easier to obtain the weapons you wanted, the upgrade process probably wouldn't be too bad. At this point, I'm probably just being nitpicky. But yeah, that's, that's it. Honestly, knowing the limitations of the PlayStation, I think the only game that beats it out in terms of fluidness is Kingdom Hearts. If Dark Cloud was remade to have Kingdom Hearts 2 level of combat, combined with the survival mechanics it already has, I probably wouldn't mind playing it over and over again from the beginning. So would I recommend playing Dark Cloud? Absolutely! 
I think everyone who has even the most remote interest in playing this game should give it a try. For all the little gripes I have about it, if you take your time, pace yourself, and remember to have fun, I think you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Well, that's the end of my playthrough retrospective of Dark Cloud. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. So until then, stay tuned.